the incidence of hereditary fructose intolerance, which is what I have, is based on whether your ancestors came from England or Norway. I've seen statistics that show the majority of failure to thrive is related uh, to HFI or other metabolic problems. There can be other sources of genetic problems where fructose is a factor. Many of the cases of failure to thrive are directly attributable to hereditary fructose intolerance. My older brother almost died with blood in his urine and potential seizures. He was born during the last years of World War II. My mother, in desperation, gave him rice milk and meat juices. He recovered, and I came along with the similar symptoms, and they started me on goat's milk and finally mashed meat. I was eating pureed steak by the time I was six weeks old. No one had any idea what was wrong. We learned to eat small amounts until the danger was past. About 10 minutes, then pig out. Ate lots of soul food, red beans and rice, stews, and slow cooking roasts with black beans. I learned to cook very early, because when I cooked it, I knew I could eat it. Imagine living with a problem that could grab you at any time. Every meal, a potential time bomb or a minefield with no map where the mines are. Remember slowly trying foods and quickly developing a Pavlovian response. When it was sweet, spit it out. To this day, I walk by an orange juice display and it's like a vampire in garlic. I remember trolling uh, this Pavlovian response helped. But I soon learned that many vegetables made me sick. Imagine every cell in your body racked with pain while trying to walk in quicksand. My energy levels fell so low that I could pass out or faint. These episodes took several days to pass. I began to understand what was in foods. I began to question them. It was almost 25 years before there were food labels. I studied food products in the library. I asked for help by mail from manufacturers. This met with few responders. I received information from Kellogg about the quality, but never about what was in anything. It was a trade secret. I remember school very differently than most people. I remember the smell of beets or sloppy joes or anything with sugar in it smelled and I would refuse to go in the cafeteria and they would punish me. Of course, I never had any problem with Mexican food or fish Friday. I was, when I was forced to eat fruit, I was disciplined for throwing up in the classroom. My grandmother would come on my birthday and bring several types of cakes and ice cream and would scream at my mother when we would not eat it. I matured very early with such a high protein diet and started dating at 13. My first girlfriend was the daughter of a wealthy Mexican industrialist. Her family could cook. I learned how to make tortillas and tamales. Didn't like that mole stuff, but I found out later why. Uh, I started a long term romance with Mexican food. My weight, however, started going up quite quickly. Corn masa is part of almost everything called Mexican cuisine. Masa is like Spanish grits, only ground up more finely. The corn is run through crushing devices that get all the juices out. All the corn syrup is removed from the corn. It's ground up, bleached in lye, allowed to dry in the sun. I could eat this, but I sure as heck couldn't eat corn. Corn on the cob would make me violently ill. I still didn't know why foods made me sick. Eating out with the restricted choices made on the basis of prior pain and suffering, it was not until my older brother became a doctor. He discovered a syndrome that matched our symptoms. There was just two paragraphs of mentioning of hereditary fructose intolerance. 
this syndrome results in a mutation that results in the reduction of glyco glycolysis when breaking down fructose. Wow, we had an answer. We had a double recessive mutation. My wife Emily would later find my lineage was pure English. My mother was a McGeehee and my father a Mims. We're close a long time ago. Seems my Druid ancestry has come back to haunt me. But hereditary fructose intolerance can also occur spontaneously. My father, an ophthalmologist, researched a double blind test based on three sugars of glycolysis, fructose, glucose, sucrose. Glucose had no effect, couldn't even taste it. The sucrose made me want to gag and throw up. I passed out on the fructose. I thought I was going to really have a problem. I was weak for many hours. My older brother got a double dose accidentally and almost died. My w sweet wife could understand the ramification of my problem. The only reason I'm alive is 45 years of love, affection, and sugar-free cooking. Emily can give you every euphemism for sugar or high fructose corn syrup. For many years, the only test for me to know if I had this problem for real and it wasn't all in my head was a puncture liver biopsy. But I really wasn't looking forward to them doing a tree core out of my liver. Dr. Tolan eventually designed a genetic marker test. It is now required in England because so many people, babies were dying of failure to thrive. Around the 80s, I was able to see what was in food. Labels suddenly appeared. I noticed that certain stuff other than sugar bothered me. In reading labels, I discovered sodium nitrate and MSG. Things found in potted meat, like Spam and Vienna sausage. I've been having migraines all my life. Once I eliminate the red cured meats, I eliminated the headaches. I also eliminated cheap hot dogs. This began the habit of reading labels. Wow, if you really knew what was in this stuff, you wouldn't eat any of this processed foods. You began to understand that most of the inexpensive food products that we eat are industrial waste products, like sodium caseinate, just some cheese spreads, Velveeta, other things. Is part of the waste product of the dairy food process. Sodium caseinate is what's left over after they've done everything else. And if you've got milk intolerance, it's really bad. I've learned that almost all industrial foods are made from the reclaimed waste products of making real, however expensive, food. I took a chip test when I was having real problems and learned I was allergic to capsaicin because I'd eaten too much hot sauce. I also found I was allergic to soy lecithin. Well, what is that? It's the prime emulsifier in almost every salad dressing there ever was, and it's used in frozen products to keep a creamy consistency so it doesn't clump up. Soy lecithin is a byproduct of making tofu. They run an industrial solvent across it, evaporate it off, and again, another industrial waste product used as a primary food product. High fructose corn syrup is not made from the corn. It's made from crushing the stalks, the stems, the leaves, the husks. Because the corn is used to make real corn syrup. It's also used to make ethanol, used to make corn liquor. Now, high fructose corn syrup is a proprietary process, very harsh, closely guarded closely guarded. These corn stalks are crushed and then enhanced in a process much like cracking of crude oil. Apparently they add carbons and hydrogens and other things to make it taste sweeter. Unfortunately it also makes it impossible for many people to digest it and your body just turns it straight to fat. There are dozens of articles to why this is so, but I don't know, I've flunked organic chemistry. That's why I'm in the car business. Look it up and you'll find this stuff. Uh, it's like kryptonite. 
It has caused alleged by me and hundreds of others to be the basis of our obesity and diabetes epidemic. I watched the school population over a 40-year period go from 1 in 10 being fat to 6 in 10 being fat and two of those being morbidly obese. The cheerleaders went from a size 6 to a size 12 or bigger. Now the charts, and my grandfather was an actuary and a statistician, show there is a direct link between the introduction of high fructose corn syrup and our alleged, legally, crisis with obesity. I walk in a grocery store, 98% of the food products will kill me. Whole aisles are dedicated to sugar, white flour, salt, corn residue, and industrial flavors and artificial textures. Fructose and high fructose corn syrup, along with aspartame, uh, will go straight to the increase in fatty livers. They make foie gras, fatty livers, and geese by feeding them corn. Remember the scene in Super Size Me when the doctor said this, his liver might not recover? I personally cannot tolerate more than two milligrams of sugar in any serving. And since serving sizes are small, I really prefer it to be zero or one, which kind of limits things. I have only three natural cereal products I can eat. Plain oat cereal, plain shredded wheat, and yes, grape nuts. Grape nuts have no grapes and only a small amount of dextrose. I can metabolize dextrose because the mutation that causes hereditary fructose intolerance occurred in the British Isles where there were really not very many fructose sources. There were, however, dextrose from honey. This mutation must have some other benefit or it would have been selected out. My druid ancestry, my ancestors built Stonehenge and it apparently was a site for large orgies, orgies but what do I know? The first real problems with fructose intolerance occurred with baby formulas that contained fruit sugar that were used in post-war England. Huge spikes in infant mortality eventually resulted in use of goat's milk. Many hundreds of babies died a horrible death before a test was developed by a geneticist, Dr. Tolan. The infants cry in pain, urinate blood, and fail to gain weight. They are eventually killed by liver failure, brain seizures, unless a fructose-free diet is introduced. My mother did not produce enough milk and an enhanced formula almost killed my old, older brother. The canned milk products of post-war period had large amounts of cane sugar. Cane sugar is half fructose. I have to this day get derision from doctors who think my situation can't be real because I wouldn't be alive. I can eat plain cereals, plain meat, dark green vegetables, kale and spinach, aged cheeses and beans other than pinto. Around puberty I discovered that uh, whole milk was way off of my limits. I really am, must, I must be 50,000 years out of time. The paleo diet is close to what I can eat. My real problem is white starches, white sourdough and dark rye breads coupled with baked potatoes and rice. Those don't kill me. I end up eating way too much of it. I learned it like weird stuff that didn't make me sick, like pickles and cheese, palm hearts, artichoke hearts. Cooking around the avoidance of fructose is challenging, but looking at me, it is a real possibility. I eat foods, I eat real foods, and it's real expensive. 